Hi everyone, Mature Summer here. Welcome to the map tour of Ferme Bayeron. This is version 1.5 of the map that I'm on. So we're standing here on the porch, and if you've played FS22 at all, this should look somewhat familiar as there's the house and, you know, we've got the the fields out here and the equipment that you start out with, so this all looks the same. But the thing that really caught my attention about this is how much has happened here and what this creator has done with this map. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So there's so much added. I'm going to go through everything that they've shared with us because there's a ton of things they've added and they started with this on December 5th and today is a couple days after Christmas so it's the 27th so for all intents and purposes we're really three weeks in and we've got five versions of this map that have come out and the creator is Pandama I believe Panda and then HMA so in the first version in 1.0 that came out, basically what they've done is they've took Haute Bayeron and they've rebuilt it to make it more active is probably the best thing I could say. They've just given you a lot of other options with productions and things than were there in the base map. So in version 1, what was changed or rebuilt? They extended the farm with large cow shed including an automatic feeder and a manure heap superstructure, a large pigsty, a large sheep pen, a large chicken coop, a large horse stable, three large greenhouses, including additional tanks, a large mule silo, NL 16, 22, 16,000 multi fruit, a large truck scale, a large fuel tank, a large driving silo, and a workshop, two shelters with a back wall, a large hall, a shelter with a solar roof. A bulk material hall and then a karcher I'm not sure what that is um, I believe the modder is I think German so um, you'll see things in the menu and so forth that are not translated into English so you would have to figure some things out but again that's a huge list of things and you know across the street is where he's talking about that he's added in all these additional things that are part of the farm. So if we go here, um, you can see we own those fields, but we own this space up here now, and it's fleshed out with um, just a lot of additional buildings and so forth. So you'd say to yourself, that's pretty incredible. But wait, that's just the first bullet point in 1.0. That's not all he did in 1.0. There's a tailor shop as additional production building directly next to the spinning mill. There's a sugar factory as an additional production building. An oil mill as an additional production building. A muesli factory as an additional production building. Uh, for those of us not in Europe, I believe that would be a cereal factory. Uh, restaurant as additional sales point for harvest and production goods at the nearby lake. Pizzeria is an additional sales point for harvest and production goods at the nearby lake. A fast food restaurant is an additional point of sale for crops and produce. Farm silos converted to multi-fruit, including a bale trigger. Uh, it's got a small plow listed and then a bale trigger for the three storage bunkers of the feeding robot, or the cow shed. That is everything they did on December 5th when they released 1.0, which would have been just two weeks after the game came out. So they made all these changes to the map just for that. So about a week later, we were up to 1.2. At this point, a seed maker is installed on the extended farm to produce seeds. An olive farm, including a shelter and a water point. A pond at the farmhouse is added as a free water supply point. A fence was drawn around the farmhouse, including a few small embellishments. There's an additional manure pile structure installed next to the pigsty. 
the old ugly brown water barrel has been replaced by a fountain and the PDA map was updated so as you recall when we looked at that PDA map you could see overhead the silo and this structure so it's not just this static view it looks like it's part of the environment which is really really nice so then about a week after that we get to 1.3 and things got a little slower there's only five or so changes at this point so lime production is installed as an additional production building next to the fast food restaurant there's numerous unloading points that have been given an unloading grid so that unloading looks a little more real the manure pile structure next to the pigsty has been moved slightly so that the manure pile no longer comes through the walls. So at this point, the modder's working on quality of life issues with the map, which is awesome. Just trying to make it seem real. The pizzeria now has its fences again, and the firm Bayeron pack comes with a clean save game to counter a new bug that was introduced by the Farming Simulator 1.2 patch. Version 1.4 came out a couple days before Christmas. Wine production is installed as additional production in the raisin and grape factory. Soy milk production is installed as additional production in the cheese and butter factory. Wine and soy milk are added as a new fill type. The pizzeria now also accepts wine and soy milk. The restaurant now also accepts wine and soy milk. The fast food restaurant now also accepts wine and soy milk. And the farm shop now also accepts wine and soy milk. So he's introduced two new production items and then obviously created a new fill type for them, but then also created cell points that we can then take those to. So once again, to me, this is very well thought out and very well laid out in how they're rolling things out and adding capability in. Finally, version 1.5, which came out today, the 27th. A sugar beet pulp is installed as an additional production in the lime factory, and they fixed a bug in the lime production. So a small little update, but only four days later, with Christmas in between. So once again, to me, this is a map, at least initially, just looking at things that I'm going to keep an eye on. Because of the base maps, this was one of the maps I was most intrigued with and potentially debating playing on. But they've taken that base map and just plussed it in such a way, and they continue to add things to it. I, I'm super excited if you can't tell just how I'm talking about it and I haven't even taken a look at this thing yet so let's see what we've got so I'm gonna start as I do with every tour on the in-game map here just to take a look at things and you can see there's a lot of icons on this map at this point I haven't compared it to the old one but I will go ahead and do that, and I'm going to include, as I'm talking through this, I'm going to switch away, and I'm going to go ahead and put in an overlay of the original map so that we can look at the original map and take a peek at that for a few seconds. And while you take a look at that, We'll then come back, and this is the updated map. So that should give you an ability to have a comparison of what has changed, aside from just the layout. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn some base things off as far as the equipment. Um, well, actually, I'm going to turn everything off, and we're just going to go ahead and kind of look at these. So tip stations. So Lejardin, Biomass Heating, Railroad Silo North, Marison, GHCB. We've got our multi-fruit silo. So that's that number that I had read in version 1 that it was talking about that's included. There's the multi-fruit that was updated, our hayloft. There's a fast food restaurant, Railroad Silo South. Debris Crusher, 
the livestock market, the restaurant, and the pizzeria, which were things that, if I recall, were added near the pond um, as additional items. So loading stations. So here we've got uh, the, I think he called it a fountain, but basically on our property where we can get water. Um, we've got a lime station, a gas station. Let's see, another gas station. These are just part of the map. There's another uh, well, I believe. Let me go take a look here. So I'm curious. Um, if we can see this. I'm not sure. I probably should tag it so I'm not just running around randomly. There we go. So there's the well right next to... So yeah, I think this was just a, one of those plastic buckets. So he's replaced these with these really cool looking things that certainly look like they fit in France, so looks like it's got the fleur-de-lis on top and so forth. Um, might just be a mod that's out there. Might be something he crea they created brand new. I don't know if it's a he, so I'm kind of trying to be careful to assume that. But, yeah, just these little touches that uh, really change the character and the feel of this map. Um, as it sits already. So let's go back here. So animals. Obviously we've got all the animals across the street here. I don't think I'm seeing anything else. But let's run over there and take a look. So we've got, you know, an additional shed. We've got our greenhouses that we can work with. So here's the unloading locations for the pallet. You can easily get to the water fill for them. So once again, very intelligently placed where I don't feel just looking at them that I would be challenged to fit and get in there with equipment. I've got a power washer, I've got my repair station, I've got fuel, I've got some additional storage for equipment. Um, I think you said, yeah, this might be our seed structure, but here's, um, not sure. I'm trying to execute the animal piece there, but I don't know that it's, doesn't look like it lets me do anything there right, right now, but maybe I need to do something first. So this is, oh, okay, this looks like it's probably... A nice cow shed. And yeah, there's the manure pile. I think that they were talking about that they moved so that it won't go through the wall. There we go. Okay, so these are pigs, actually. So we can have 270 pigs in this building. Now I'm just really curious if these are chickens or what it might be, but I just don't know. Oh, I just was too close. So yes, so 360 chickens. So chickens, pigs. Uh, this is our silo here. Okay, so that's a seed, the seed maker that he talked about adding in. So we can have 65 sheep. And I do like the fact of just the ones he selected. You know, I know these are, I think, part of the game, but uh, they just look... just did a really good job of making them look like they fit. Um, I don't know how else to describe it other than, than that. It's just really cleanly done. I'm wondering if this is like a TMR mixer, because it's got the right the right items in it. So here's our cow barn for 80 cows. We've 
got a bunker silo, another bunker silo. Um, and yeah, I, you know, that's the store that's obviously there from the game. But this was an area of the map, I believe, that just had nothing in it that he's repurposed just brilliantly for the ability for us to do things. Now, you know, you can certainly look at this and, and kind of be, well, you know, this this gets you too, too far along. Um, you know, because obviously all, all of these buildings would take money to buy. Uh, landscaping this, putting up the lighting, the silo structure, all of that, so, which is true. You know, so you'll have to make a determination uh, on your gameplay, you know, if you have any issues with this or not. But for just the variation... Okay, so this is a horse barn. A large horse barn. I'm not sure where the dialogue is. Oh, there it is. So, I'm going to have 14 horses here. So, I think that gives us the ability, which I'm sure was their goal, to have every type of animal available that you can. Um, and the last piece, and probably the most exciting, and you can see there's a ton of things that light up as I toggle this on and off. So, you know, I think the biogas plant was there. This was the debris crusher. I believe that was there. So he added in the oil mill, the cereal factory, the mucilli factory, the sugar mill. So those are down here. Once again, as we've compared the map, I'm guessing that these are things that were added into the PDA map even. So the tailor shop next to the spinnery, which he mentioned. Uh, the cheese was there, the bakery was there, grain mill I believe is base map, so great processing other than changing some things in there, and then we've got a sawmill and carpentry which I think were present before. So if I go into productions, so yeah here in the sugar mill which is a brand new production to begin with, and then the oil mill. So you can see what we've got here. Uh, the cereal factory, which is going to require honey, raisins, oats, and corn to make some cereal. The tailor shop that he mentioned, so you've got to get fabric, which will be coming out of the spinnery, I'm pretty sure. And then the greenhouses. And so we don't own the spinnery at this point. You know, these are productions, I think, that we own and can utilize. So to make the clothes, for example, we'd have to, I think, buy the spinnery to then be able to do it. And then we've got our seed production. And the lime. So that's interesting stones and sugar beets and then you get lime and cut sugar beets out oh I see okay you can do one or the other that's right he did mention that that was something they added in in 1.5 that sugar beet pulp was installed in the lime factory um, I'm not that familiar with farming maybe that makes sense of why you'd be doing that in a lime factory but it's you know, it's there, and it's certainly an intriguing thing. So the calendar is still the base calendar. Uh, with everything that was changed, I was half expecting to see something there. But, you know, as he mentioned, you know, now you've got all these cell points, which a lot are certainly part of the base, but here's, like, the pizzeria and the restaurant, the oil mill. Um you know, buying certain things, the fast food restaurant. So let's see. So Cotton just has the spinnery. We've got all kinds of places for eggs from the chickens. A couple places for the milk. Wood chip silage. Of course, we've got biogas plant and the biomass, so we'll be able to do things there. And then, yeah, flour, bread, cake, butter, cheese, fabric, the clothes, which 
he added um, chocolate and then yeah manure slurry and then we can get digestate so you can sell herbicide and there is the wine and the soy milk that he added and again I assume those are the German versions of that and I did see screenshots when you um, look online for this map there are some screenshots where they've there are soy milk boxes on pallets and so forth so they've also created you know textures and so forth that go along with things to again create that immersion that exists uh, with all this addition and depth on this map um, so this really raises the bar quite a bit on uh, if you want to play in uh, the European map that comes base game uh, and are okay not starting out at the basic level and just kind of looking at, hey, I've got a real town around me and I'm going to service that town. This, you know, still gives you that option, which is great because, um, you know, you can still go ahead and, and play... somewhat from a starting point. I mean, yeah, you've got a lot of infrastructure around you, but you've still got just 100,000 in new farmer mode here. Um, so speaking of now, let us go to the next step, which is what is our starting equipment and see if there's any changes made there. I don't know that there are. So we've got the Steyr, we've got a Valtra and a Massey. They're basically about the same, uh, about the same horsepower. The Deutzfar harvester that begins normally. The pickup truck. We've got the 8,000 liter trailer, and then the header. So yeah, these look like, if I recall, the items you start with in game with uh, the base map, so there have been no tweaks to that. So um, we've kind of done the starting farm tour in my excitement. I kind of jumped ahead and ran all over. So uh, we've done that. And now we can go ahead and do a quick flyover. All right, so I've gone ahead and turned off the HUD as well, just so that we can get the cr cleanest view we can. So you can kind of see the expanse of what was added to the farm here, if you didn't get enough of a feeling of that as we ran around. Um, but you know, our base farm is still, still here. So we've got the cereal factory and I believe the oil mill? I don't remember what was here. Oh, the lime production. So that's the sugar mill. I believe this is the cereal factory. Yeah, oat, the oat bran and the oils. So you've got those there. Um, I believe that entire area has been newly updated and added. Let's head on over to the, the pond. So obviously the map itself, you know, is, is going to look good because this is the map provided by giants. So there didn't need to be any work done on the map per se. It's really the workings of the map that have all been changed here. So here is our... Um, not sure what this is. Is this the... I see like pizza. Okay, I found myself. So I'm down here. So yeah, one's the fast food restaurant. Yeah, 
I don't think this is the fast food restaurant. I think the fast food restaurant is there. And then the pizzeria, so... Okay, that's just the south silo. Alright, so that's the debris crusher. The fast food restaurant. We've got biogas. It's a gas station. So we're going along the south of the map here. Now we're going to head up the edge. So yeah, if you've seen my map tour of Greystone that I did a few days back, that showed up a few days back, um, you know, and I, and I understand that, you know, this is from the developer directly, so it's hard to expect a modder to come anywhere near this, but... You know, if you look at the trees, if you look at, you know, more importantly, the edges of the world, um, there's nothing here, even in flying mode, that makes me feel like I'm not in a re in an area that I could say, oh yeah, this is a, a real area here. Um, as I say, the terrain's coming up to get me. But just even the way the trees are, are done, when I talked about, you know, not having things feel like they're just in rows, except where they should be, like those, you know, thin decorative trees there. You know, there's just something to be said for laying things out in a way that feels more natural. And I'm sure that takes some time to do... Okay, so we're there. All right, so the grape processing unit, I think that's it's one of these buildings here. Uh, facing, oh, there it is, okay. So that's where that is, and I, again, I believe that was on the base map. So, you know, this may not be anything new for folks who have, have played the map, but obviously there's a few productions around, and when I initially experienced this map, uh, the capability to fly over wasn't available because we didn't have power tools, for example. So let's head over to the lake because I think that's really the only other thing that is vastly different. As they've got a couple buildings that they put in place there. So yeah, this just gives you a whole different, at least for me, it gives me a whole different respect and appreciation for just how well done this map is by Giants. Um, you know, they did, they did a great job. And, you know, one of my issues, so I think, so sorry, before I get into that, let's just finish this up. So I think this is, let's see, what have we got? San Giovanni Neapolitan Pizza. There you go. So that's our pizza. Again, I don't know if that was something new created or if that existed, but that's Oh, this is a pizza place, too, so wait. So this is... Ah, I see, that's the restaurant. And then this is the pizza. You know, and all they may have done is, is taken an existing structure in a building and put, you know, pizzeria, uh, you know, a label on the front and so forth, but still. Um, I don't know that... I'm assuming because this is new that this didn't exist and that they did something and modified it to turn it into this because this almost looks like it's it's a house or an apartment building and then they just said hey it's a restaurant by putting a name on it which is fine I mean it's just the way they did it, uh, it it's just well done I don't know 
don't know how else to say it. I think it's extremely well done. You know, so these trees here, obviously they're lining the road. I expect them to, you know, be a little more symmetrical, but even with that, just the spacing is varied. Uh, you know, it's those little nuances, as ridiculous as it sounds, they just make a map feel like this is a real environment versus I'm looking at something that was created just for a game. I mean, the way this is laid out, um, you know, with what Giants did and then how this modder um, just took it and did something even better with it. Um, I am pretty thrilled. So, I think that gets us through the map tour. Um, I'm half anticipating that we may see a 1.6 before the new year or shortly thereafter. I will certainly be on the lookout for it, but at this point we are, um, you know, at the point I'm not going to do a driving tour because I, I think everybody, since it's a base game map, has gone around and done things. So the flying tour got us to the buildings and the productions that were new quickly and seeing them from the ground. Um, it's not going to be that vastly different. And at this point, I know I've spent a lot more time in other areas than I typically would do on a map just because of the depth that exists here. So we're at the final point of the mature simmer verdict. Would I use this map and would I give it a shot? Absolutely. Um, there's nothing I'm seeing that would turn me off from this thing at this point. Um, you know, this may be something that I... <laughs> I honestly turn around and use in, in a let's play, you know, to replace some that I feel I'm at a dead end on, uh, like Hastings or something like that that's just too large and, again, not fleshed out enough. So, you know, I think this is a great example, though, to kind of, you know, add, once again, my opinion for other map makers and other modders to consider. If we take away the fact that, obviously, this modder did not need to put any effort into designing an entire map. Um, they took a, a map that was already there and they added to it. That obviously probably allowed them some more time and some more mental capacity to focus on, on those things, but it was still like this is the this is really really a good feeling for me of a well thought out set of additions you could kind of tell that even as i was reading the posts from the modder of what they added they didn't add something and then two versions later come back and add something in to make that thing work like when they added wine and soy milk they did the entire supply chain you could not only make it, you could transport it, you could sell it, and it was all done in a, in a continuous piece so that when things get added, um, they immediately become usable. And that's really the most important thing when we're talking about a sim is can I use things without having to figure out how to use them on my own? So once again, if I take some examples from some other things I've done on the channel, uh, you know, to make the North Dakota map playable, I needed to basically build out a farm which required me, in the case of what I did, to, to build out a realistic farm on that map, because if you started with small tractors and small uh, equipment, it would take you beyond forever. It's already taking me forever with the largest equipment I can find in the game so far. Um, you know, can you imagine running those fields in Hastings, North Dakota with three meter or six meter implements? Um, you know, we'd be there for days, not just hours. Um, but it's, it's, you know, and, and then not having fuel stations and there aren't really significant cell points. There's just enough to get by, um, and I think if I really took a careful look, as I am with these map tours, 
at all the items in the crops. You know, can I sell all crops on, on certain maps? I, I would guess that in some cases that's not the case. But I would just encourage folks to kind of think about how do I make the world seem real is what someone like me playing the game who's looking for just an immersive sim experience um, would look at things. And to me, you know, these little things, I put a fence around the house, I did whatever. They're small. Those are things I could have done with construction as well. Um, but they've saved me the time and they've made this feel like something that is real as opposed to just kind of there in a sandbox. I mean, I, I, I just am beyond impressed with what I'm seeing here. So, um, you know, certainly drop your comments down below if you've had experience on this map. You know, there is a possibility if I do go ahead and, and play on it that I'll suddenly uncover some warts that I'm not aware of just touring the map. But um, unlike a lot of the other early maps that have come out and things that were done, um, I'm having trouble finding anything that I would say uh, would be a problem here. Um, I'm, I'm usually pretty careful to give an objective eye and not be overly in one direction of overly positive or overly negative. I try to kind of find a mix, but there's not a whole lot of negative here. I mean, really the only one is the one I mentioned as we were running around looking at the animal structures is one could certainly say, you know, you're probably looking at millions of, of dollars in the game economy to build out what's across the street that now is part of this farm. Um, and now you're just given that. And so some people may say that makes it too easy, and it may. Um, but there's nothing wrong once in a while to have a map that just makes it easy and just makes it fun to play. And I think that's what this would turn into. Um, so don't be surprised if you see a Let's Play on this sometime in the future. I'll see you next time.